thing that I've learned in the past, I'd say year basically, is our timeline expectancy to get a deal has grown. Literally every quarter, I'm getting it dialed in more and more and realizing what some of the really heavy hitters in the industry are saying and realizing what they mean by long-term follow-up. But when I first started in this business, I thought that month one, two, maybe three in that first quarter, you get a deal or two. You're supposed to get one deal out of every 50 leads you generate. We've heard all these stats, right? And we believe them because they're true. These stats are correct. You should be getting one deal out of every 50 leads. What is left out of that is what's the timeline of the one to 50 conversion ratio. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be guaranteed every time you hit the 50 leads, you got a deal sitting there ready to go. What that means is every 50 leads that you generate, if you do enough follow-up and stay on top of them, when their situation shifts and they're ready to pull the trigger and make that decision to sell, there's a seller in there. One out of 50 is there. Now that could happen three quarters, four quarters, five quarters from now. That's the part nobody really talks about that needs to be, the attention really needs to be paid to. So when I first started, I thought, okay, heck, I'm generating 50 leads a week. I should be getting a deal a week. And then when that didn't happen, I started to get discouraged and I blamed my marketing, my leads, my, like everything other than the timeline. I didn't think of timeline as a real element to this recipe. So then when we got into quarter two, we're like, okay, and same thing happened. It, in our third quarter, we finally got our first deal. And we actually got two deals in that third quarter of business. And once I hit the fourth quarter, then I'm okay. I'm a year into the game, a little bit more of a veteran. At that point, I started to really realize that what my conveyor belt's missing is follow-up, lead follow-up. So I need to start working with other people that can just focus just heavily on the follow-up part. But there, there's a lot of moving pieces on the follow-up as well. There has to be a rhyme and reason to the actual process that's being done on that side of things, which is a whole different conversation. <clears throat> so what we've learned in now our third year of business is the average turnaround time on a lead, on average, some go faster, some go slower, but nine months is what you're looking at is the average okay. turnaround time. Because when we started, I thought three months, within three months, like we should be able to get a deal because title will take about four weeks to go through that. Give yeah. me a month to generate a lead, a month for title to do their thing. And then with this book, boom, 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 we're getting paid in month three. Now, then we extended it like, okay, realistically, maybe it's four months to six months. And that didn't pan out. And then we're like, okay, so at nine months, you have enough time to where you get your hot and ready. So hot and ready for me is the people that are, it's a hot lead and they're ready to sell. It's just ready to go. It's fully baked. There's pain and there's motivation and urgency. Everything's there. They sell. Then you have your follow-up and the follow-up. This is a really difficult part for people because when you have a healthy conveyor belt, you should be having fresh leads coming in every day, but you should also have the, your scheduled callbacks pretty much coming from every day as well, right? Because you need yeah. to touch these leads on average 12 to 15 times to get that deal locked up. Yeah. So if it was a one and done and we glorify as an industry, all sales glorifies the one touch close. And unfortunately, that's just not the reality of life. There's a sales process and it has to be respected for what it is. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter what we want and what timeline we want to move on. It's what the seller is looking to accomplish and what their timeline is that really matters. So then after I learned this, just a week ago, I had a, a meeting with Tyler Austin. He's the founder of REI SIF, very successful business person in real estate and doing phenomenal things. And uh, he did a deep dive into our conveyor belt and our system. We use REI SIFT and uh, Tyler Labrador, another sub two student, we squat it up. So we do about three to 4 million dials a month right now in the call center. And then I work with Tyler to set up our, what we call the SEAL team, where we deep prospect the people in deep pain. They're on multiple lists. Like they might be on foreclosure, divorce, and bankruptcy. They might be on tax yeah. delinquent, vacant, and something like that. There's pain there. Or the data is telling us that there's pain there. So we triple dial, single line dial, no dialer, triple dial them. Call them, hang up, call them, hang up, call them, hang up, to get them on the phone and let them know we're interested in buying the property. and. So that's the SIFT model. We do a lot of that. And he did a free consultation with me and Tyler last week. And he looked at our data and he was blown away by the number of sheer, just the sheer number of correct 
data that we have, correct numbers in our account. It's like, oh, you have like 145,000 correct numbers. I think the most I've seen is 30,000 or something like that. So there's a ton wow. of data here. What are you doing to follow up with it? And again, over the last two years, I realized my lesson that I learned was sales cycle is long, follow up, follow up, follow up with the interested leads. Not only you have to follow up with the interested leads, you also have to follow up with the not interested because you got their phone number. You know that they're not interested today, but they might've lost their job a week after you called them. They might've lost a loved one. Some life event could have happened at any moment after they said no, you need to call them back and then see if anything's happened there. And that's what he pointed out to me. I just learned that now in our third year of business. And one of the most profound things that he said to me was my biggest deals, my six figure deals, the sweetest of the sweet deals that I get are 18 months or longer because nobody wants to follow up with a lead that long. Nobody, everybody gives up. Everybody's pulling the fresh list, the right now, the right here, right now, and they're just dialing those and hitting those, which is good and you should, because you get the hot and readies and you're building your pipeline. So that has to happen. But once you generate that lead, you gotta follow up with them and you have to follow up with the ones that said they weren't interested every three to six months. So the game here really is not real estate, it's follow up. That's the game. The product just happens to be real estate. And everybody, my new mission as of a week ago is to open everybody's eyes in the industry to let them know, guys, if you're playing this game for one month, three months, six months, do something else. Do something that you can get results in six months. I don't know what that would be, but go figure that out. Maybe go talk to agents, but trying to go direct to seller and get a fast turnaround time is not the way to go. That is the way to build a pipeline of leads and have a healthy business long term. Longevity is what this thing takes and you better be damn good at every part of it. You better pull the right data, keep your data organized. You better have good data to call upon and have good team members dialing and texting and marketing to those homeowners to get that lead. Then you better have a great team to follow up with it, uncover the truth, uncover the actual pillars and what is it pain or gain? What are we looking to accomplish? What is the solution that I need to bring? Doing all that. Then you got to have the negotiating and underwriting so you can negotiate and do that. Then you have to have the exit. You know, you're going to wholesale it, you're going to hold it, you're going to flip it. What are you going to do? What's the best fit for this thing? You got to have that buttoned up. Then TC, all of these, it's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together. And if you are missing some, it's extremely hard to put a jigsaw puzzle together if you're missing some of the pieces. Thing won't come into focus for you. And you're going to be like, this is ugly, or this doesn't work, or this sucks, or... So that's now the mission that I'm on and REI can bear belt on is seeing these things, identifying them, and then really trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together so that it can actually be a working model that does produce actual deals and leads consistently, but over time. So that's my new mission. If you did 50 leads a month for nine months, you should have a deal in there. Now, if you didn't, yeah. to your point, if there is no deal, maybe it's not the leads, maybe it's the conversations on the follow-ups. You're not appealing to the people for whatever reason. You're not saying the right things, you're not doing the right things, you're not digging deep enough. Now we gotta do a deep dive into that side of it as well and say, what are these conversations sounding you know? like? Do you sound professional? Are you checking all the boxes? Are you doing the things that need to get done for that side of it to happen? Right now we have it for the cold calling and then Brandon's team, we put in a QC to check and monitor the leads there for the longer term follow-up. Uh, but that's more recent because we realized that's what it's gonna take is there should be more deals coming and the callers themselves aren't going to be like, man, I'm just thinking up the joint right now. Like somebody come in here and check my calls and tell me what I'm doing wrong. First thing they do is like, oh man, these people ain't ready to sell. These guys are all jokers. They ain't giving me garbage leads. I want the Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross leads. Give me the PPC leads. Look, every lead is going to have the same problems. At the end of the day, it's acquisition's job to figure out what is the problem and what is the solution? And then how do I piece that puzzle together and bring those two things to fit? So the analogy that comes to my mind now when doing a marketing campaign and launching a conveyor belt is, imagine if we were gonna launch a rocket into space. So you need all the things that you need. You need the rocket, you need the fuel, you need all the stuff to make that happen. 
imagine the money would be the fuel because that's one of the most expensive parts of launching a rocket into space is the sheer amount of fuel that it takes to do that. So what I'm seeing happen in the industry a lot of times is people aren't calculating correctly. They're saying, okay, I'm just going to put enough fuel to get off the ground. And then once I get off the ground, we'll figure it out. We'll get more fuel. But that's not the best approach always. On the other side of that coin, if you can get enough, sticking with that, the rocket and the fuel analogy, if you can put enough fuel, fill that tank up properly, it takes a tremendous amount of fuel to get a rocket off the ground and out into space. But as soon as you break that gravitational pull of the Earth, how much fuel does it take to push that vehicle forward from that point? Like once a spaceship breaks the gravitational pull of Earth, all it takes is one of those little aerosol spray, that little and then it's like hurtling 18,000 miles or whatever through space at that point. It takes very little. And to me, this is the analogy that makes sense to me in our market, in our industry, is if you can put enough funds and enough of the team and pieces of the puzzle, put your rocket together correctly and launch it. If you can break through that gravitational pull, get through the hard part of it, now you're in that math equation portion of it that says, okay, for every dollar I put in, I get $3 back. For every dollar I put in, I get $4 back. For every dollar I put in, I... and then you're just tweaking and you're saying, okay, well, this worked better than this. I'm going to increase here and decrease there. I'm going to, then you're just playing with it. But you do have to have enough of that fuel to break through that gravitational pull. And that's the part I think needs a little bit more clarity and insight for a lot of our industry. You got to know at least. So that's one point of it is just having some awareness and letting people know that maybe you have to squat up. Maybe you have to save a little bit more or at least be prepared. If nothing else, be like, okay, I have this much cash, but I have this much reserves just in case. The other big thing that I would say is, and most people already know this part of it, but maybe some of the newer people need to hear it. The real money in real estate is not wholesaling and even fixing and flipping. The real money is going to be in buying and holding, doing creative yeah. deals where you can get, like Pace says, the appreciation, depreciation, get the cash flow. You got all the trifecta. You're not just getting cash flow. You're not just getting one part of it. You're getting all three. That's how you build real wealth. And that should be everybody that's getting into real estate. Obviously, in the beginning, you're like, okay, I just need to get some wholesale deals, get my money back, right? Recoup some of the money that I've put into this. But very quickly, you should be looking at how can I hold some of these properties so that I can get that monthly reoccurring revenue and that will fuel my marketing expenses forever at that point. Now I have that perpetual rocket fuel coming in for my rocket and I can launch rockets every month and it's not coming out of my pocket, it's coming out of the residual revenues that are being generated and it's a snowball effect. Because every month, every couple months, you should be picking up a new property and you're just making that snowball bigger and bigger and bigger for the reoccurring revenue models side of everything.